Welcome back to DXB. Today, still on the topic of food, best places to eat, all the exotic desserts, AI-driven meal planning, and potentially robots feeding us. But that was just Faris. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest has been a front runner in the culinary industry. She's an editor turned writer and has created a successful career creating content with some of the most renowned chefs in the world. Please welcome once again to our studio, Laura Coglin. Woo! Well, oh, that. love this round of applause. The lady <laughs> whose profession I've always been very, very jealous of. Oh, I could say the same for you. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> to be back Laura on. good summer. It has been a lovely summer. Yes, I've been sort of in Dubai for a lot of it, out for a little bit. Uh, my family live in Malaysia, so I've been there for a while. So yeah, it's been really lovely. So throughout the show, we've been talking about the best places to eat and the new trends in the yes. F&B industry. Yes. What would you say are some of the new experiences you've had this season? Do you know what I find that I've been doing a lot is sitting very close to the chefs. I don't know about you, but counter dining, you know, sitting up at the counters of lots of different restaurants mm. has been new. Has been this kind of like this new phenomenon that's happening at the city. I was at this place called Coco Row in Elsa Cal Avenue, and I was sitting up close, and I was being hand, I was being sort of passed a, a hand roll, this beautiful sushi hand roll. It was fantastic. Then I went to row on 45. This is now what two Michelin stars counter dining again. No one's sort of sitting back and everyone sort of wants to get up close and get that front row, front row seat. I quite like that. Mm. I feel like we have very different places we go because I think of like Cold Stone and them like tossing <laughs> ice cream into my mouth and I'm like, do you know what? All that counter dining, or when you get that Turkish ice cream, and you know you're trying to get that code. Well, I want to ask you about a hot air balloon breakfast yes. club. What in the world is that? Because I've been dying to go on a hot air balloon, and now I have two reasons. Right, exactly. This is this is two, this is your bucket list experience that you've always wanted to do in Dubai, mixed with arguably everybody's favorite thing to do, which is eat breakfast. Right. So winter season is here. What better way than it, than fulfilling that bucket list experience than by teaming up? And, eat and enjoying an amazing breakfast. Now these guys at Hero Balloon Adventures, Hero Balloon Flights, they are hosting this brand new series where they teamed up with three of the coolest homegrown restaurants here in Dubai and they are hosting these lovely breakfasts in the sky. It is amazing. Now how early do you need to wake up for something yeah. like that? Okay, so there are not without its faults, okay? So <laughs> unfortunately to be able to enjoy this sunrise experience, um, I went yesterday now I had to get up at 3.15. Oh, so this is like Ramadan, huh? This is it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, we're, pre we're preparing for it. So yes, yeah, so I was up at 3.15. You have to go out to, towards Dubai Outlet Mall, out to the Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve. But I tell you, it is worth it to okay. be up in the sky, 4,000 feet with a beautiful sunset, you know, with a tamale from Lila Molino, with a beautiful sort of dirty English muffin from Nightjar Coffee Roasters. Um, or some amazing burek from 21 Grams Bistro. These are the these are the cafes that are teaming up to, to host this hot air balloon ride, and it is really amazing. Well, I don't More want to rub it in, Dina, but I've done it. It's yeah, you have to wake up early, but it is definitely worth it. It is, it uh, is so brilliant. That's the thing; it's become an experience now. It's not just about yeah. going and eating the food. Obviously, lots of delicious outlets. We know that. Um, so there's a lot of competition in making it a thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's a night true. out. Let's get together. Oh, did you hear about this place that does that and that? What other what other places have caught your eye when it comes to an experience rather than just a meal? Oh gosh, that's such a great question. I think I really loved um, sort of anywhere that's doing something a little bit unusual, right? So like I was saying with, with, with counter dining, I really love this little restaurant that I went to, Kokoro in in, uh, in Aosakal Avenue. So unusual, you know, you typically you go to a Japanese restaurant, and you know what you're getting. You're gonna order some sushi and you're gonna sit there and you're gonna fiddle with your chopsticks and you're gonna give it a go. But this idea of sort of, of really talking to these chefs, really getting to know their history, getting to know what their passions are, that's something that I love doing is sort of learning about their education. I think that's been, that's been, really, that's been really cool and really unique and, and something that I think is happening in the city a lot more. We're giving a lot of um, kudos to these chefs um, and I like to know about that personally. Um. I will go back to the uh, to where you mentioned you have to wake up 3 a.m. <laughs> the balloon again. Yeah. So tell me, how are you going to be hungry in that time? That's a really great question. Um, I probably wasn't very hungry, no, at 3.15. But by the time that the sun rises, you get, you're, you're sort of ready to go up at about 7 o'clock. And then you're in the sky at around 7.30. And by then, you definitely need coffee. So you get some lovely coffee and then 
<laughs> you always need to feed them. I you love this. What do you think about the food uh, food festivals coming uh, yeah. in Dubai? What do you think about this? I mean, look, I, anything that brings people together to eat food is amazing. And like you said, we've got loads of amazing food festivals that are happening. One that's coming up this month in October at the end, we've got the What the Food Festival at Al Sakal Avenue. <laughs> so I love the name. <laughs> and uh, they're going to be, I, if you've been to Al Sakal Avenue before, it's amazing. But particularly when they host these festivals, you get all these foodies coming out, all these different stalls. Uh, collaborations, there's going to be food workshops if you've ever wanted to learn how to make the best steak. Carney Store are based in Al Sakal Avenue and they're going to teach us how to make amazing steak. I agree with you, the Al Sakal Avenue has amazing mm -hmm. food truck and food vendors. Every year's new vendors comes with a with a unique dish and blows my mind and every time I would go for taking videos for my YouTube so I would go there and it's like how are you guys bringing this for example curry in coconut and then I said like how we got this rice and then curry and, oh. and then in coconut itself mm. in the raw like you're gonna enjoy this and I like this this really yeah, I love you're it. totally right and, and and people are put in in Al Sakao which is very sort of this kind of culture driven neighborhood they ha they use the opportunity to join different cultures together and create something unique and you mentioned Karnas store I had the <laughs> best ever brisket sandwich at yeah. Al Sakao at their place yeah that was insane this is it so they'll be there setting up probably with Lila Molino um, creating some sort of Mexican steak surprise Ooh. Laura, thank you so much for being on DXB today. And we're going to say goodbye to you properly in a sec. But before that, River, we are going to put you to the test. We do have our DXB in 60 with Dina. OK, River, we're going to get to know you just a little bit better. You need to answer these questions as quickly as you can. Let's cue the timer. Three, two, one, and go. What was your first job? IKEA. Job in IKEA. What, was, uh, what is your motto in life and in work? Find happiness in little things. Yes, that's great. If you could have only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Majbus <laughs> Robian. What is your favorite cuisine, your favorite kind of food? Emirati cuisine. Uh, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Fly. Fly. What's your go-to fine dining restaurant in Dubai? Somewhere S fancy that you like to eat. Uh, do you want me to say that it's place? Like, uh, yeah. Street? Yep. Uh, the Parkita is an Indonesian restaurant. All right. What about something on the streets? Street side restaurant oh, Dubai? Pani Puri. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your most used app on your phone? I'm going to guess Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? My big brother. And if you, if there's anything that you love most about Dubai, what is it? Variety of food culture. Well done, Raza. Thank you so much. And I'm definitely going to take you up on some of your recommendations. Thank you so much for guest co-hosting with us this evening. And Laura, as always, uh, you know, I want to give the breakfast and hot air balloon a go, but then I think I prefer breakfast in bed more. But <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. And lovely seeing you as always. Oh, always a pleasure. <laughs> Time now for a quick break. When we come back, we have a stunning performance by the one and only Jay Abo. So stay tuned.